All right. We got one more talk of the day. We've got a, we've got a lot of good talks. I think probably my favorite was uh, I'm not even gonna say it, but so it was Gideon ours. Powell and Griffin Haby. Um, they're both my spirit animals. Um, proud Texans, oil men. Um, so Gideon uh, runs, ran, was CEO of Choya Petro, his family oil and gas business, until he co-founded and reassumed uh, the leadership as CEO of Hoddle Ranch, which is a Bitcoin mine here in Texas. Griffin Haby, all around uh, Minch. Um, oil man, founded oil, uh, Mountain Line Oil and Gas, uh, ran his own oil and gas company, uh, oil and gas veteran, been in the field for 15 years, and uh, figured out that Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining is the beautiful, most beautiful thing that ever happened to the industry, energy industry. And they're going to talk about why Texas is going to be the mining capital of the world. I'm just going to end there and let them take it over. And Marty will probably have his Andrew Polstra moment where he can yeah, just I don't think I'm gonna start be. it off and then uh, let these two riff. Uh, so they're going to round out the day. And then at the end, I'll, I'll give it a wrap up with about one minute talk just to, to, to wrap us up. Boys. Do your worst. I'm just, I mean, I was going to let you guys take it. These are two, two of my Texas recruiters. Uh, Parker brought them in to bring me down here, and Griffin Haby said they'll never take our guns, and I was like, ever. Hey, I'm coming down. So what's going on with mining in Texas? Um, I, I think they really said it best. There's, there's never been a uh, market for stranded energy, and Bitcoin has, has fixed problems that we've been dealing with for decades and decades and decades. And thinking about like starting my career, I was chasing like the Marcellus Shale. There's a bunch of gas up uh, right in the population backyard. It's cold. I thought, man, this is just the opportunity of a lifetime. And fast forward today, I'd rather have stranded energy in Texas than, you know, be sitting on that. And I think uh, I'd like Gideon to talk more about the energy uh, and how much God has blessed this state. And then I'll kind of talk about the future after that. Yeah, I mean, all the miners have touched on it, but um, specifically when God made Texas, he had Bitcoin mining in mind. And, you know, Jesse spoke about the convergence, uh, you know, this, you know, wham, bam, trifecta of wind, solar, and then hydrocarbons out in West Texas, but also the climate. So early on when um, I, Jesse, um, and I started in 17 and really we were actually setting global power markets to build a power plant and we we're like, damn, power's cheap in Texas, what consumes power? And his nerd brother was mining Ethereum. So that, that we pivoted to like, oh man, let's get into consuming power. Um, but really one of the big problems people thought was, oh, it's so hot in Texas. Uh, but that's just from a physics standpoint, not a problem. Um, and really it is if you're in Houston and really a lot of people don't know this, but one of the first mines ever in Texas was a 50 megawatt pure money laundering Chinese operation in Houston. Um, and that was built in probably 2015 or 16. And we just stumbled into that and saw that and we're like, holy hell, that's a huge facility. Um, but really the climate in West Texas, I mean, it is arid, it's dry. And really that's the, you know, one of the most important things is you need dry air and um, to run these open air and cheap power. Yeah, and I, I would just kind of say, looking into the future of where this is going, you have to look into the past. And not only is, you know, five, I'll, I'll put five like bullet points of Texas history together as quick as I can. Uh, Genesis was the first one. God put all the natural resources right here and smiled as he did it. And then uh, some Spaniards came over looking for gold, right? Hard, hard money. Imagine that. Uh, so they come over and they incentivize all of these, you know, settlers to say, I will give you uh, this huge swath of land and you get everything from the heavens to the center of the earth, right? And as you're talking to oil men, thinking, man, center of the earth, let's, let's go looking for it. And then, you know, you have all these uh, like cowboy culture just kind of happen. You have all this land and so you have this independent spirited um, just way of life that kind of started here. Then, uh, you know, Mexico happened and basically they tried to come up and there was all of these, you know, part outlaw uh, guys coming in and, and getting in this Tejas state. And they had a cannon to, you know, defend themselves against raiding, you know, Comanches. 
And then they, they realized that these, these wily Texans were kind of getting, getting higher in population than they wanted. They tried to say, hey, we're going to govern you from Mexico City. They said, no, we're a state's rights people. They said, okay, we're going to come take that cannon back. And what do we say? Come and take it, right? And that is still in our ethos today. You'll never take my guns. I run with some guys that will die on the hill with me, so I'm not the least bit worried about that part. And so you have, first off, like private property rights being made. You have a, a culture of don't tell me what to do. Uh, get off my land. And then uh, where are we? So in the 18, <laughs> eight, 18, you know, 30s, 40s, so then English common law puts it as law. And you have these private property rights. And uh, along came uh, 1901, little, little town in Beaumont, gushing with fun since 1901. You hit spindle top, and all of a sudden, a ton of uh, oil comes out of the ground. And you have this now wildcat mentality. So you've now bred a cowboy with private property rights, with this risk-taking attitude that says, hey, I can control my own destiny. I will, you know, maybe lose it all, but I could win it big. So all of a sudden, you're incentivized to go out there and explore with your own, you know, materials and capital, and there's a lot of upside in this. And then fast forward today, like that, that feeling is still there. And you can literally look at the, the Bitcoin mining people out there. It's, it's almost the same model as the oil and gas business. And then I think 95, the deregulation of the grid has just paved the way for a bunch of innovative, cowboy, risk-taking, uh, will shoot you if you come on a private property land that we're not... <laughs> not in any you know sort of worry about it ever ever leaving and i think with that mentality coupled with just cheap energy keeping on coming uh from the you know heavens to the center of the earth uh the the future is so bright and limitless i think for me <laughs> i mean as a uh... As somebody who recently moved to Texas, I think it was a bit jarring for me to get somebody who's been going to Bitcoin meetups across the country, across the world since 2015. The Houston meetup specifically is an eye opening experience as you go down there and it's a bunch of wildcatters being like, all right, what the hell is going on with this Bitcoin thing? I don't, I don't understand what's going on. I just know it's making money. It's just really exciting to see these people come, these people to see people get interested in Bitcoin in a way and just be like, all right, I, I'm not really exactly sure what happens, but I know there's something here and I'm going to learn as much as possible. And that uh, the mentality and the ethos that you just described is, is very apparent as an out outsider coming in. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the biggest things. Actually, someone tweeted this, you know, the other day, just about Texas has or West Texas specifically has a bunch of resources, but just that culture. I mean, this culture of entrepreneurialism and, you know, that wildcatter mentality. I mean, that's kind of one lineage, but the other one is like, you know, the whaling community pioneered by the Dutch, the Americans, you know, up in Nantucket, there was a whaling cartel and then some, you know, you know, where they were trying to control or controlling the price of whale oil, kind of like OPEC. And then some rogue asshole capitalist was like, I'm going to compete with OPEC. Well, we've seen that. So this has played out, you know, on control of resources, you know, we were running out of oil and then, oh no, we're, you know, then some crazy asshole drilled sideways and now we got too much oil and we're overthrowing or undermining totalitarian regimes. And I mean, the reason that Russia and some of these other dictatorial regimes don't have as much power is because right here in America and specifically Texas, we use bottom up innovations to drive the price of power down to the absolute detriment of the most evil institutions globally. And so, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and so really we've seen it, you know, you know, really when commodity prices go up, it tells you two things, either one, compete with it and drive it down or find more of it. And I think globally, 99.9% of the power globally is controlled by corporations. And Texas is the most free market grid in the world. And that means anybody can come here and innovate. And I think that's where ERCOT was a huge leap in innovation and this bottom up, you know, permissionless, most permissionless system in the energy markets. And so you had low cost energy. And then you layer in, you know, the Bitcoin miners who are, you know, I think some of the most innovative people in the oil business have gravitated to Bitcoin because there's a problem and there's no clear path. Everyone in Bitcoin, we're just making this shit up like all the time. How do we figure this out? Make tons of mistakes, 
but learn from it and move on. I think here in Texas, there is just a culture of, yeah, you're going to fail. Who cares? Get up, dust your boots off and get back out there. And and I would also say that there's now this uh, scenario to where, uh, you know, it, we've been boom and bust, right? You, you've loved when oil's high and you're eating beanie weenies when it's low. But all of a sudden, you t I, I talked to this old seasoned, uh, you know, veteran oil guy and he, and me explaining to him that all of a sudden, you know, you, of course, you're always going to love high gas prices. But what if I told you, you you were rooting for low gas prices and absolutely celebrating then because you could mine uh, Bitcoin cheaper than everybody else? And he's, he was looking at me and, you know, you could see the wheel spinning. But like uh, Marty said, like the, the taste is or the, the energy is just palpable when you get to Houston. And I always say like there's certain cities that uh, just totally understand Bitcoin faster than most. Uh, you know, New York City, they, they understand financial markets. Uh, Silicon Valley gets like the, the tech and the innovation. Um, Chicago, uh, you have the commodities. Uh, Wyoming, you have ranchers with low time preference. Um, Nashville, I haven't quite figured them out. I think they just got a little outlaw in them as well. <laughs> and then you look at Texas and I, I, I can say like, you know, Dallas is a big, you know, financial center. It's not New York. But Austin, you're having more people leaving Silicon Valley coming straight to Austin, you know, to innovate here. And then commodities, we do a couple of those pretty good in Houston. And then we just understand like the energy backed money. And in Miami, you know, they hate commies. And so they're in good company too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, and that's one of the capabilities. And, you know, people talk about oil and, you know, I came from the, I'm still in the oil and gas business, you know, doing, you know, Uncle Joe said drill more. So we're going to do that too. Um, <laughs> But really, these, these, it's less about like a framework of commodity, like, oh, oil and Bitcoin merging, and more a framework of capabilities and just how do you figure things out and really in a mutually beneficial way. So, you know, everyone who's and that you like thinking about, man, now I'm rooting for lower prices because growing up, whenever oil would spike, my dad would smile and I'd kind of smile. But when we're out in front of everybody, we didn't smile. <laughs> but now, you know, with the price of power being one of the largest uh, determinants of our profitability, you know, lowering the price of natural gas, incentivizing more wind, solar, you know, that's absolutely a mutual benefit that is rippling through society. And, you know, as Jesse was talking about, we're Bitcoin miners were the wildcatters. When we built our first mine in West Texas, everyone's like, oh, don't say Bitcoin, Tell, call it a data center blockchain, whatever. I was like, look, I'm a Bitcoiner and I fucking love Bitcoin and we're leading with, we are building a Bitcoin mine. And really these Bitcoin miners are gonna be the ones that are gonna build out that infrastructure. Then the boring slow data center people will come, then the steel manufacturing, but all that infrastructure is gonna take time. But you know, here in Texas with the permissionless innovation of the grid and the culture of Texans, you just go build it and they will come. So not going to lie, there's a bunch of Bitcoiners throughout the world who are worried all this hash rates coming to Texas. Is, can, is Texas going to be the next China in terms of hash rate concentration? What would you say to worried Bitcoiners about this potentially happening? How can we ensure that it is not a centralizing factor? You should be that, worried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and 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 so like my kind of take is uh you know you, you talk about a semiconductor shortage and like i i still think that there is when i talk about the innovative cowboys of the oil field like when there's hundred hundred dollar oil you're getting some of the best minds that the planet has to offer and the real like stamp on the innovative cowboys hitting the mining scene has not started yet if you go out and see a uh you know deep water offshore you know semi-submersible drilling platform and the guys that you know conjured that up and just these just super technical uh you know deep science guys that uh they solve problems like you said and and they're gonna walk into a bitcoin mine and it's just you know, child's play for them like I, I really think that we're gonna have some serious uh innovations and that might happen during a bust right so they're all busy now uh with high you know hydrocarbon prices but when it busts out and they're looking for a job, uh, cheap energy is going to, you know, ex expand more Bitcoin mining here. And so it's just a beautiful marriage of, of this cycle that I really see uh, just, I mean, exploding here. And uh, once we start manufacturing chips and, and building our own, uh, basically, ASICs in this country or in this state, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you can compete with us, honestly. Were you alluding to secession there? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about that publicly. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a real, I mean, that's a concern. I mean, we're, I mean, there, I know of personally probably seven to 10 gigawatt projects in the work just in Texas. You look at, you know, modern efficiency computer 
ASICI things that that'll could easily go over 50%. But I think that's like, yeah, that's a concern, but like, Hey, everybody in this room, go compete, go build. I mean, that's one of the coolest things in the Bitcoin mining industry is, you know, like Chad said, there are no secrets. I mean, literally all you do, it starts with the land and the interconnect on the grid and, you know, off grids, cool and all that and critical, but it's just from a scale standpoint, it's very difficult. So, I mean, I, I don't, we're going to have, I mean, I truly believe in the next couple of years, we'll have at least five gigawatts up hashing in the next 10 years. I think we'll have at least 10 gigawatts. And really, you know, one of the concerns is the federal government, who knows, oh, energy consumption, bad, let's ban Bitcoin. But we, I mean, one of my absolute missions right now is build, be involved with building out so much Bitcoin mining demand response on the grid that they can't turn us off and it's too big to fail. And it's like, hey, we have to have this because the renewables have caused so many problems. So I think that's why we need to move fast and absolutely integrate with the grid and every power trader, anyone that's involved with the grid knows Bitcoin mining is an absolute game changer. And then you look at on top of that, look, currently ERCOT's like 80 gigawatts, which is huge. Uh, we're going to drop 10 gigawatts in the next couple of years in there, but really we, you know, Bitcoin's going to a million, 10 million, a hundred million in this inflationary environment. We're going to need hundreds of gigawatts. And so here in ERCOT, I mean, it's going to be difficult, but I think in my lifetime, at least we'll build out another 50 to hundred gigawatts, um, in Texas. But I mean, I think globally we're going to need, you know, hundreds of gigawatts. And so, you know, don't let us all do it here in Texas, um, go out and compete. I completely agree, especially with the fact that we should be racing to get the energy sector integrated with Bitcoin mining as quickly as possible. Too big to fail. Like I think I had this epiphany this week speaking with Luke Roman on TFTC. It's we don't need to wait to ask permission from the politicians to say yes. Just get the energy sector as ingratiated as possible, and they're not going to be able to say no. It's a, it's yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the, you know I've heard control the narrative, which that, you know, oil business, you know, I've always wondered why do people, why is there a public narrative shaming on oil companies? Well, it's one, cause you're going to buy an oil company's product, whether they market it or not. So they never worried about branding and all that stuff. And I think in Bitcoin, we do need to like do a good job of saying how it's important, but at the end of the day, let's get, just go build stuff and like, like empirically show this is critical. Grids in Europe are screwed. Grids in California are screwed. There is no viable solution and people are gonna die. We saw it happen here in Texas and that was a travesty, but that, with Bitcoin mining in conjunction with more batteries and other forms of energy, we're gonna fix the grid. And, we, and literally we will usher in an energy revolution that we can't even comprehend. I mean, the industrial revolution was cute. What we are gonna do here in Texas, <laughs> West Texas will dwarf everything we've ever seen. <laughs> And yeah, I would, I would just like echo that geopolitically, like if you look around, you don't hear any states that have, you know, a lot of natural resources really, you know, anti-Bitcoin. You, China, obviously, they, they love control, but they just don't have any natural resources. That was an easy, you know, no-brainer. And then you look at, at Russia, who basically had their central banks come out and say, we need to get rid of this. You know, we're, we're deep Soviet, you know, commies as well. But Somebody like Putin's was like, hey, whoa, we actually, we got really cheap energy here and a ton of natural resources. Let's not, you know, kick out the mining side. And so you're, you're having these haves and have nots, but when anybody with common sense, like kind of, you know, takes a step back and looks, it's, it's the cheap energy states that the, the innovation that's allowed to do are gonna be your first ones, then just your cheap natural resources second. And then these other guys, they can, you know, complain and, you know, let's 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 compare uh, senators from a, a natural resource state like Wyoming or a, a senator with no natural resources like Massachusetts. You, you understand that they're going to be on two different sides of the spectrum here. But at the end of the day, you, we don't have to market our product. You have to use it in, in every day of life. And, you know, the, the human flourishing argument is more power is how you, how you get to wherever you want to go. It's the if, greatest correlative to the human experience and human individual li liberty and suffering is the, your access to low cost and reliable power. So if you care about people and you know human prosperity and the sanctity of life, producing more energy at a reliable and low cost is critical. Amen. It really is. Amen. Uh, I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win. So, uh, uh, like, we're, we, we could potentially see if Texas 
when Texas becomes the mining capital of the world, arguably already is, uh, it's going to force other states to adopt ERCOT like systems because they're like, we need to compete at this level. Yeah, that's what's so awesome. Like Texas is huge, but Texas is the test net. Everything we're doing here in ERCOT is absolutely critical and we are going to win. We're going to succeed. We're going to improve our grid. We're going to lower the cost of power for everyone. We're going to stimulate the economies. I mean, the Texas miracle the last 20 years has been great, but it's largely benefited cities. It has not benefited rural Texas. And this changes the narrative to where we're going back to middle, you know, to these communities in Texas. And one, I mean, the reason that people in other states are like, oh, it's bad, is because they don't have the right regulatory framework. And so when they're consuming energy, they don't have bottom up innovation. And so really everything that's been the foundation that's been laid here in ERCOT and what Bitcoin miners are gonna do is absolutely critical that we scale to not only other states, but globally and to fix grids. So that's why it's so imperative to be, you know, telling our story and all that and just being successful and consistent. Yeah, did you say succeed or succeed? No, no comment. Uh, any questions? I can I can spin some more up in my head. Oh yeah, let's you, go. Get, I mean, get how like how tightly does Bitcoin the protocol align with the ethos of Texas? Uh, stepping away from mining specifically, the, the open source nature. I, I think it's absolutely an, an evolution in, in the history of humans and prosperity. And really, when you look at going back, you know, I, I'll talk more. I mean, in Texas, we have the best culture. I think there are several other states, but, you know, I've got to sell Texas because I live here. Um, but really, it's, you know, when you look at the founding of America, like what made America successful and the most powerful nation in the world, um, it was property rights. That was a huge foundation. So when I look at Bitcoin, I don't necessarily see, I mean, Parker, don't shoot me, but a monetary revolution, but I see a property revolution. And really when you look at, okay, you can own land. And you know, when people said F you to the old world and came to America and ha owned land and had a security and clarity that they can build upon that land, they built, they improved farming, they imp they built buildings. And then on top of that, someone started an LLC, a corporation. And I think that's like so critical to human prosperity is like clarity of you own something. So when you meet, you know, and you know, the Human Rights Foundation has done an amazing job. A few of us were invited there several years ago and we met the dissidents of Venezuela, Afghanistan. I specifically met an Afghanistan woman and she was doing a coding. She had no, um, you know, uh, rights with the bank and her husband kept taking the money out. Well, then she got into Bitcoin and she was more motivated because she owned something and then she grew her business. And then what did she do? She hired more female coders. And as someone with three daughters, that is like the most empowering tool for, for women as well in these horrible authoritarian regimes globally. And so I think the ethos of America is self-sovereignty and we're not there yet but we're always improving. And I think Bitcoin has taken that to such another level that we are, again, just scratching the surface on really, you know, ha owning our, controlling our lives and getting away from this top-down authoritarianism, but down to, I'm a human, I'm capable. And if politicians, you know, largely politicians, one of their biggest flaws is they think they're so smart and they need to run our lives. And the, the best ones are the ones that recognize humans are fully capable of managing our own lives and Bitcoin, doesn't make that voluntary it absolutely takes that right into our hands to where no one can take that from us so i think there is nothing more american and more texan than the bitcoin network freedom COVID. Uh, the, 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 uh, the investors uh, have pressured the unconventional guys to be much more disciplined about capex uh, because you know a lot of people expanded in the early days of fracking and then got washed out when the prices came down and so they haven't been able to come back online recently uh, during the, the during the big surge in prices uh how do you guys think about that in the context of bitcoin is there an opportunity in the short term uh to convince a lot of these guys to invest in the capex knowing that they're not taking the same capital risk that they might have been seven eight years ago right now uh it's tough right so if, if you're talking to a guy that's producing gas and selling for five bucks, if, if you're honest with him, you say, hey, just go ahead and buy uh, Bitcoin with that money. Uh, it's, it's kind of a headache, you know, converting it to that. But the I mean, the CapEx is, is a hurdle. And as as long as this is this is America and there's high gas prices, we're going to drill and, and find those. And so the 
the oil companies, I, I feel like, yeah, fool me once, you know, shame on me. So, you know, Wall Street's really handcuffed them on a lot of their, you know, exploratory budgets. But at the end of the day, uh, capitalism works uh, on, on free markets to where if, as long as these prices stay high, we're going to drill our way into cheap energy again. We, we, we've, we've done it for, it's a tradition that we've been doing for a century, right? And so the, uh, the more, like, because that's, that's what I tell, like, operators. If, if it's high gas, buy the Bitcoin. If it's low gas, mine the Bitcoin. If it stays perfectly, like, leveled at $2.50, that's all we've ever been asking for in our entire careers as a, as a stable commodity to stay there. So the, the worst thing that can happen, you know, of, is like what you've ever dreamed of. And so the more we drill, because if you give me and the homies 10 rigs each and a lot of acreage and the Haynesville and the Marcellus, I can get gas down to buck 50, right? That's, that's not the problem. The gas is here. It's abundant. It's clean burning. Uh, we're just kind of getting demonized, you know, as, as, as we do. But a lot of this, you know, price action has been the export of LNG, right? That's another great innovation that the oil field is thought of. How do you pipe gas over, over the Atlantic, right? You, you freeze it and, and get it so dense that you can actually put it on a boat and send it over there. So the Science. innovation's going to happen. It's, it, it's gonna be, in my opinion, more of um, cheap prices and, because uh, you have to really believe in Bitcoin to take uh, you know, $5 gas and run that through a generator and buy the you know, CapEx heavy machines and, and start mining on the gas unless you're truly stranded. It's a great tool for, for stranded assets, but um, until there's like a, a big break in the price, which, you know, Strip says we're, we're good at four to five in the next year, uh, I, de I don't see that happening yet, but uh, yeah, in the future, in my opinion, uh, cheap energy is gonna turn a lot of mines. Yeah, and I fully expect, I mean, you know, really the convergence, like a few years ago, Bitcoiners were calling data centers and data centers didn't know what the hell to do with these people. Um, and the same thing, energy oil companies, power traders didn't know what the hell to do with us a few years ago, but you see all these worlds converging. And so you've already seen a Bitcoin mining company, HUD-8 acquired some data centers. I don't like that strategy, I like Bitcoin, but you know, let the market compete. Uh, but same thing with energy. I, I fully expect, I don't know if it's a year from now or 10 years, you'll see a Bitcoin company buy a miner uh, or buy an oil and gas company or an oil and gas company buy uh, a Bitcoin mining company. And you're already seeing a lot of these Big companies already have power trading to Shell, Exxon, Chevron. They've all got power trading desks and they're seeing the opportunity that's going to come to them. And really, you know, the capabilities like right now, we were a little early. We tried to do a gigawatt three years ago. It was a little early. Um, but, ne you know, in the next three to five years, gigawatt campuses will become standard from an efficiency standpoint. And then in the future, 10 gigawatt campuses will become standard. And those don't exist. So we're going to build those. And, you know, vertically integrated super majors are really going to, and the humans inside that are going to be the ones leading those build outs. Who becomes who first? That's the big question. Do Bitcoin miners become energy companies or do energy companies become Bitcoin miners? It's going to be a mixture of both, I think. Yeah. Gentlemen, this was a hell of a close down to a great day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one final thought. Parker's requesting a final thought from each of you before we get off the stage here. I, I've given too many thoughts today, I think. Um, yeah, I, w I would just say, I mean, I'm, you know, relatively new to this uh, compared to, you know, a lot of the guys in the room here. And the, the one thing I, I would tell you that, like, Texans get is energy-backed money. And the more, like, smart people that I've talked to in this state and the more people that I like network with in, in, in the space is, is just, uh, there's, it's past the point of like, uh, is this gonna work? Like I've, I've crossed the threshold of, I know this is the future and there's not a chance in hell that Texas does not lead the way on that. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll pose a question or anybody could tweet this out. I had an idea come to me a couple days ago and my wife tells me I have too many ideas so I try to, throw them out there and partner with people so that they get done. But um, really, I'm in, we're bringing gigawatts of Bitcoin mining to Texas and specifically West Texas. And um, we're going to need to train. And what's so beautiful about these Bitcoin mines is really there's a lot of capabilities that are needed, but you don't need to go to college to learn that. In fact, I don't know if anyone should ever go to college again. And really what we need to be doing is building more um, trade type schools and partnership 
um, with local communities. And so I'm really wanting to start um, some Bitcoin mining, uh, critical facilities manager, critical facilities technicians, and ASIC repair schools throughout West Texas. And um, if anybody could, is interested in that, I don't know how to run a school, start one, but um, I can fund one. And so if anyone has um, some ideas, my DMs are open and, and I'd love to partner with anyone to, to stamp out Bitcoin mining training and data center training um, schools uh, for the plebs. Cause I saw like somebody donate a bunch of money to a college to like, Hey, let's go study Bitcoin at some fancy degree university, but like let's empower the plebs and really, you know, help train uh, middle America and West Texans to really help us scale this Bitcoin mining operations throughout Texas. So if anyone's interested, let me know. My, uh, my final thought will be uh, onshore ASIC repair is a massive opportunity if you can figure it out. So it's a great idea. And God, God bless all of America, not just Texas. It's true. Yeah. yeah.